You're listening to Workplace Perspective, an employment law podcast presented by Sapphire Legal. Workplace Perspective is a regular podcast series for employers and employees focusing on education, training, and the law to help organizations of all sizes develop and maintain successful workplace relationships. The opinions expressed by guests on Workplace Perspective do not necessarily reflect those of Sapphire Legal or its attorneys and should not be considered legal advice. And now, here's your host, founder and principal attorney at Sapphire Legal, Teresa McQueen. Thank you, James, and welcome everyone to Workplace Perspective, where we are striving to raise the bar at workplaces everywhere. Today, we're talking with author, speaker, and LinkedIn expert, Debbie McCormick. Debbie is the author of LinkedIn for Rookies, answering that age-old question. Debbie will be sharing her tips on how to create a magnetic LinkedIn profile. It's going to be a great show. Don't go away. We'll be right back. The opinions expressed by guests on Workplace Perspective do not necessarily reflect those of Sapphire Legal or its attorneys and should not be considered legal advice. You're listening to Workplace Perspective, an employment law podcast presented by Sapphire Legal. Welcome back to our listeners and welcome to Workplace Perspective, Debbie McCormick. Thank you, Teresa. I am so delighted to be here and talking to your listeners. Well, I'm super excited to have you here. So before we get started real quick, why don't you tell our listeners a bit about you and what you do? Great. I came to LinkedIn years ago and found it very confusing and that there was no instruction on how to write a profile that would attract people that, you know, I wanted to talk to. So I did the research that most people don't have time to do and learned how to do it right. As a result, I was contacted by Lincoln Motor Company over LinkedIn, um, through LinkedIn, I should say, to speak at their sales retreat. And that was the beginning of knowing that I could help people with LinkedIn. So now I write uh, profiles that showcase inspiring women who are changing the world through their businesses. I get to work with some great men too, don't get me wrong, but I do love to partner with women who inspire me um, so that I can help them uh, have their businesses and themselves become visible to the world and become known as experts in their field. I am a best-selling author. I've spoken and trained on LinkedIn all over the country and on Zoom, my new best friend, Zoom. And I'm creating an online course right now as another way for people to learn how to become visible on the largest business-only social media platform in the world. So it's to every business's advantage to be there and be there strong. Awesome. Well, I love your book. I've always been on LinkedIn, and but I had done nothing except, right, I got on there, whatever it was, and you know, asked all my professional friends and colleagues to link with me and then nada. nada. So when I went solo in 2016, I left my law practice partnership and went solo again. I bought your book. I put it, I set it right up in front of the computer. I had it on my tablet. I set it up in front of the computer and I went step by step by step. Oh, it was awesome. Time. That was, that's exactly <laughs> what I intended. I'm, I'm so pleased that that helped you. Oh yeah, it was great. I finally felt at that time, like LinkedIn could really be a useful tool in my practice. And I have to tell you for social media, it has always given me the most bang for my buck, really. Yes. So, but I, I want to know, so why a magnetic profile? Okay. Why a profile at all? Oh, well, that far. because you, you have to have a profile on LinkedIn um, if you're a business person, because every business person is on there and you don't have to wade through chili recipes and kitten pictures in order to get to the people that you want to talk to. Right. So the reason I said magnetic, it just means attractive. I was thinking of calling it an attractive LinkedIn profile, but it sounds like the profile's wearing a pretty dress or something. It just didn't go where I wanted it to go. So I called it magnetic in that the whole purpose of a properly written profile with the right keywords in the right places is that it will attract the people to you with whom you want to do business. So today I'm excited to give your listeners 
pro tips that probably 90% of LinkedIn users don't know about. Well, I can't wait to hear them. I'm sure our listeners are excited. I'm thrilled. It's still a mystery to me. And I've, you know, I've I've used it. I've, you know, I've tried to utilize, utilize it as much as I could, but I know there's more to it than what I'm able to, like you said, I don't have the time to look and to do all these things, you know, like I should keywords completely baffle me. Right. I don't have time to sit down and think about that. So let's jump right into it. What's our first tip? Okay. Very good. The first essential to a magnetic LinkedIn profile is to identify your ideal client. Now that, that sounds kind of no brainer, but a lot of people don't do this. And here's why it makes your life so much easier. When you know who you're writing your marketing messages to, it makes your writing exponentially easier. The way that I first identified my ideal client was I literally took my favorite client and I made a list of what made her such a joy to work with. Um, first of all, she was a woman. As I've told you, I, I love partnering with women. She was prompt in her responses to me, which made my life easier. She's excellent at what she does. I admire her greatly, and I have used her services many times. She had the respect and appreciation for her clients that I do, and she always made strive, strove, strived. I'm not sure what what that is, English speaking me. She always worked to make her client's life easier. Her work ethic matched mine, and most specifically, she wanted to make the world a better place, not only through the way she did business, but her attitude and gratitude. So when I completed that list, I thought that is my ideal client. And now I literally write my marketing messages with Lisa's face in my mind. I write to her and Lo and behold, I have attracted a bunch of Lisa's into my life, which makes me a happy person. So that's ideal client. That's great. That's a great way to do it. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's focus. I know when people say, you know, think about your ideal client, they try to make somebody up. Like bits and pieces of my ideal client, but you actually took your favorite client. Yes, and it made it much more easy for me. It was fun to write down all the things that I loved about working with her. And then then at the end, I had a list of the women that I wanted to attract. That's great. Mm -hmm. So you think it's it's hard to sit down and focus on what's positive as opposed to what's negative? Did you ever find yourself doing it? All of a sudden, you're wandering off into, well, I don't want this and I don't want that and in your mindset or was it pretty easy to focus on the positive aspect? It was easy to focus on the positive because I just love this woman and I, and I really love working with her. It was very easy. And of course, every once in a while I'd go, golly, I hate those people who don't get back to me for a week, you know, but it was, it was mostly just focused on just, let's just write about Lisa and then we'll have the perfect ideal client. Okay. What's our second tip? Number two essential, use strong keywords. Now, I'm dedicating this to you, Miss Teresa. All right, keywords are nothing but search terms, all right? Let me illustrate just on myself because I'm very straightforward. Say a woman is searching for a LinkedIn expert. So she types LinkedIn expert, quote unquote, into Google or into Lincoln's uh, LinkedIn's search and LinkedIn expert then is her search term. When you're talking about within a profile, it becomes a keyword. So don't get confused. They're exactly the same thing. It's only the context that changes what it's called. All right. So she types in LinkedIn expert. If I don't have the keyword LinkedIn expert in my profile, I will not come up in her search results. She doesn't get a chance to meet me. She doesn't get a chance to work with me. That's why keywords are so hugely important. And where you put them in your profile also makes a huge difference to the search engine spiders, as I call them, who are, you know, the algorithms who are looking to match. So you have to use your strongest words so people can find you. 
Okay, so then how do you come up with that? So you had two focuses. The first focus is what is somebody else thinking when exactly. they're searching, right? Exactly, yes. Okay, so let's talk about that. And then let's talk about how do you integrate that into your own profile without having it turn out to be like a bunch of gibberish. <laughs> Good deal. All right. Um, let me, that second thing I'm going to address at, in my third essential. So okay. hang on for that. Okay. But what, uh, it's really easy to come up with strong keywords because it's just what you do. So legal expert, workplace legal expert, two different keywords. Okay. So you're just, yes, you're putting you're putting on the brain of your ideal client. What would she type into a search engine in order to find someone who does what you do? Okay. And LinkedIn expert is probably my strongest keyword, but I have probably seven others that I use. So just get into that mindset. What would I type into the search engine if I were looking for a LinkedIn expert? That's how you do it. I like it. Do you make it sound so simple? It is so simple, straightforward. But it but nobody explains it easy, simply. That's what I strive to do. Well, the keywords, if somebody would have told would it would have explained it to me that way, I think it would have made much more sense to me. Yes. But in my head, you know, it was all wrapped up in what are they saying? What am I saying? What is what are the search engines gonna pick up? What's how's it gonna all come together? How do I get there? What words right. do I use? I use yes. very clearly. Very yes. Very yes. All right. Very we straightforward. Have, we have three more tips. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to get to those three remaining tips on how to create a magnetic LinkedIn profile. Stay with us. We'll be right back. The average time a resume spends on an HR manager's desk is seven seconds. And most of them are tossed aside. Now imagine if one of those resumes belonged to Yasmin, who was living in a shelter, juggling three jobs. I had to be resilient. That's something that you can't teach. Or if that resume was from someone who worked 12 hour shifts at the recycling company with my dad, who's 72. That taught me a work ethic that I carry with me every day. We rely so much on a resume, yet it could never tell the full story of someone growing up where I did. A lot of things could have gotten in the way of my goals but I learned to push through, and that's what I bring to work every day. So maybe it's time we look beyond the resume and look to grads of life. Discover new ways to develop great talent that are so much more than what's on paper at gradsoflife.org. A public service announcement brought to you by Grads of Life and the Ad Council. If you enjoyed today's show, do this. Share us, like us, give us a review on your favorite podcast app, it means a lot to us, and it ensures more people tune in and raise the bar at workplaces everywhere. Welcome back, everyone. We are talking with Debbie McCormick, the author of the book, LinkedIn for Rookies. All right, Debbie, let's keep moving through these tips. They're awesome. Okay. Essential number three for a magnetic LinkedIn profile is optimize your keywords. Here again, Miss Teresa, dedicated to you. All right, optimize <laughs> is just a fancy word for putting them in the right place, putting your keywords in the right places. The LinkedIn search engines look in very specific places to match what somebody's searching for and what is in your profile. Here's where they need to be. There are five places. First, they need to be in your profile headline. That's the headline right below your profile photo. Okay. Second, they need to be in the body of your about section. That's that large empty box that you can fill in with 2000 characters. That's quite a bit of space. We'll talk about what's in the about section, but your keywords need to be in the body of your about. Third, need to be in the headline of your current experience. Now this is the experience that you wanna showcase, okay? also in the body of that current experience, and then in your skills section. Now, this is an unsexy, un, un, really unknown part of the profile. You have to scroll down to find it. These are your top skills that you're known for, and your keywords belong there. So, for example, 
LinkedIn expert is one of my skills. LinkedIn trainer is one of my skills. LinkedIn author, LinkedIn speaker, you get the, you get the drift. Only three skills show at a time, but you just click a little button that says show more. And then you bring down the whole, the full list of your skills. So again, it's your profile headline in the body of your about section, in the headline of your current experience and in the body where you're writing about your current experience and then in your skills section. Okay. So how do you got to go back to my question? So how do you do that without making it a bunch of gibberish? Okay. We had a great guest on a retired Colonel Carla Bass who told us how to write efficiently and effectively and all that. And it cut down on the, on the fluff. So is there a way to do this so that it still reads professionally? Yes. Like, you know, like, like, so like how many times do you have to say these keywords when you've got them in there? Yes. You're asking about what's called keyword stuffing, which is literally gibberish with nothing but keywords and the sentences don't make sense. So that is a great segue into essential number four, which is structuring your writing for easy reading and writing about what you do in terms of the results that you bring your clients. Okay. I, I must be paying you to do this, Teresa. You, that segue was just perfect. So here we go. By the way, we are not paying Debbie to be honest. Yeah, we are not, we are not paying. <laughs> Debbie's not paying Teresa. Let's just get that clear. This is true for both of your, both your about section and your current experience section. Let me tell you how this breaks down. In both, in the about section, let me take that first because they are a little bit different. In your about section, the top part of your section um, should, should have a compelling statement about what you do for your clients. And keywords are very easy to put in that statement. All right. And then, for example, I'll give you, I write pro- LinkedIn profiles that showcase your services and products so that you are easily visible to the people who need you. Now, one of my, pro- one of my keywords is LinkedIn profile writer. That incorporates that. And then I'm, I move on down. Next section is called, and you can do this in any order that you want to. This is not stuck in concrete. Next section should be called clientele, literally in capital letters, the word clientele. And you talk about who your ideal clients are. They're entrepreneurs or they're mid-sized business uh, owners or whoever they are. And the point of that is so the reader can self-select whether you're a person that they need to talk to or you're not a person they need to talk to. And believe it or not, deciding that you're not the person that they need to talk to is a benefit to you because you don't get your time wasted with somebody who isn't your ideal client. Then the next section, this is going to be your favorite part. This is called services or in some cases, products or products and services, depending on what you do. And here's where keywords are easily used. And by the way, you're listing your clientele and your products and services with bullet points. What you want to do is have the reader take take his or her left index finger and just go right down the page and get the gist of who you serve and how you serve them very easily and quickly. Because as we all know, MTV ruined our focus and concentration, right? I'm giving my age away. So (laughs) it was the end of it all, huh? (laughs) Yes. That was the end of the ability to concentrate. And so you, you just, and, and a lot of people don't have time to start at the top of the profile and read thoroughly all the way down. They may take the about section thinking that that is a summary, or they may take the current experience going right to this is what I need. And this is what I want to read about. All right. So your products and services section, and you, and you do this, the clientele section and your products and services over in your experience section too. You don't have to, you don't, it doesn't have to be exactly the same words. And that's, that gives you the ability to change up your keywords. Mm -hmm. So I can say LinkedIn expert in one section, and I can say LinkedIn specialist in another section. Okay. 
your services and what you do is a prime place keyword list of your keywords. And of course, make, make it make sense because you will be punished by LinkedIn if it's just keyword stuffing gibberish. Then your final section there in the about section is your contact information. Everybody knows that your contact information is hidden somewhere on your LinkedIn profile. Don't make people search for it. Give it to them right there. Your email, your website, your phone number. And here's a pro tip that most people don't know. LinkedIn will punish you if you have live hyperlinks to your website and your email. Why? Because it takes the reader off of the LinkedIn platform. So what you do to get around that is you just don't hyperlink that information. You just type it in www.teresathequeen.com and you don't hyperlink it. That way the reader can just copy and paste right into Google and go right to your website if that's what they want to do. Now it's an extra step for them, but it's a one second extra step. Nobody minds. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. So always at the bottom of your about and your experience, give them your contact information because remember, they're not necessarily reading all the way through your profile. Don't make them search for it. That will just frustrate them. Then at the very bottom, you can use hashtags. You can use your keywords as hashtags. LinkedIn expert is all one word, hashtag in front of it, right? LinkedIn author, all one word, hashtag in front of it. That's a key place to use your keywords, but you label it as specialties and then LinkedIn does not consider that keyword stuffing. It's hashtags. So there, there you are. You've got, now you've got your keywords all in the right places, all over your profile and you are golden. I think that's great. I think it's good that you can find, you don't have to use the same keyword over and over and over throughout your profile. You're saying- that's right develop these different aspects of the same thing and put them in different places as you work through your profile. Exactly. Okay. We're getting a signal. What's our last and final tip. Okay. Profile uh, or excuse me, photo and banner. So many people overlook this. So um, quickly, your photo needs to be taken by a professional photographer who can light you properly, pose you properly. And most important, do post shoot work in Photoshop or whatever app they choose to do. Your goal is not to look 10 years younger than you really are. Your goal is to look like you on your best, most rested day. And then the banner is some excellent real estate that is the rectangle behind your photo and get a graphic artist to customize that for you with your logo, your book cover, your keywords, a shot of you in dynamic action if you're a speaker. That is great real estate and your photo and your banner are the first impressions that the reader sees. So they need to be excellent. Awesome. Debbie, you have given us so much information in such a short period of time. That's, it's awesome. I love it. I love it when people can walk away from the show and put things right into action and you've given us awesome tips. Thank you I love so much too. for joining us. Thank you. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much for being with us. You can learn more about Debbie by visiting her website at www.debbiemccormick.com. That's D-E-B-B-I-E-M-C-C-O-R-M-I-C-K.com. You can also connect with Debbie via our website at sapphirelegal.com slash podcast. I want to also thank our listeners, my radio angels, James and the Nave at Night, and our workplace team extraordinaire, our engineer and producer, Paul Roberts, our associate producer, Melissa DeLacy, with music provided by the very talented Stephen Versaloni. Thank you all for joining us on Workplace Perspective, and until next time, keep raising the bar. Oh, 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 oh